who Calvary paved the way by blood that we might win a right shining crown. Salvation has been brought down, O oh glory. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down from heaven. Go and shout, go and shout, and tell it the world around. Go preach it and to people in sorrow and tell it tomorrow. Preach the word of God that we might win a prayer in heaven till the lost salvation is full and free. Spread the news all over the land and sea. Go teach it in, in every nation. All over creation, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. All alone, without a friend, he suffered to pay it all. Yes, he paid it all. Jesus paid it all in his blessed promises sweet victory can be found praise his holy name oh glory praise the lord salvation has been brought back from heaven go and shout go and shout and tell it the world around Go preach it and to people in sorrow and tell it tomorrow. Preach the word of God that we might win a crown in heaven till the lost salvation is full and free to sinners spread the news. All over the land and sea, go teach it in, in every nation, all over creation. Praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. There's a blessed home prepared way over in glory land. In right glory land, blessed glory land. I have trusted in his love, and now I'm heaven bound. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, glory. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been down from heaven, go and shout, go and shout, and tell it the world around. Go preach it and to people in sorrow, and tell it tomorrow. Preach the word of God that we might win a crown in heaven till the lost. Salvation is full and free. Spread the news all over the land and sea. Go teach it in, in every nation, all over creation. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Said, Amen. You may be seated. Now that is a walk up song. Good morning. Oh, somebody said Miles. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, we're glad you're here. Welcome to our guests and families. First off, if you didn't grab a communion packet uh, when you walked in, there's some people in the back. Just raise your hand, and they'll bring one to you. Um, if you're a guest, we're glad you're here. Uh, we'd love to know that you're here. There's a card in front of you in the seat box pocket there. You can fill it out and just leave it on the seat, or there's some boxes in the back. You can drop them in. Um, secondly, if you have anyone has a prayer request, you can write it on the back of the card, and our prayer warriors will spend time over that in prayer today. Um, next week, at this very time, we'll be finishing up a uh, weekend with Brian Fatasic and his family. Um, super glad you're here. Hope you'll be here through the weekend, next weekend as well. Um, we're going to have a good time. I'm hoping we're engaging in worship today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be here. Thank you for this opportunity to worship and give honor to you. We ask that you help us engage in true worship. In Jesus' name, amen. How's everybody doing this morning? God has been good to you to say amen. amen. You've been good to yourself, say amen. <laughs> amen. You've been good to yourself, say amen. Oh, wow. Okay, let's try that one more time. You've been good to yourself, say amen. amen. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I know, I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays. I know, I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know. to this reading, Jesus had fed the 5,000 
and the people were intending to make Jesus their king. So it was important that he had the disciples leave before they got caught up in the situation. <clears throat> Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walk on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Let's stand for this next selection, please. Jesus, my heavenly King loves me, I know. Praises to him I sing, onward I go. Closely to him I cling, blessings still flow. I love my Savior too. You know that I love my Savior. And he loves me too. Yes, he loves me too. You know that I seek his grace and favor, grace and favor in everything I do. Walking with him each day, love light does shine. Doing his will always, never repine. Kneeling to him I pray, thy will not mine. I love my Savior too. You knew that I love my Savior. And he loves me too. Yes, he loves me too. You knew that I seek his grace and favor, grace and favor in death. I do. Happy to serve my friend, lean on his arm. Rapture will never end, nothing alarm. Voices will sweetly blend under his charm. I love my Savior too. I love my Savior, bless the Savior, he loves me too, yes, he loves me too. You know that I see his grace and favor, grace and favor in everything I do. You know that I love my Blessed Savior, blessed Savior, he loves me too, yes, he loves me too, you know that I see his grace and favor, grace and favor in everything I do. You may be seated.
Oh, I want to see him. Who wants to see the Lord when they leave this place? Say so, amen if you want to see the Lord right now. <clears throat> as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierced my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on and through him I must win. Yes, we're singing. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. You know we're there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice cares I'll pass I'll be forever to rejoice when in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him. He will give me light. Satan snares may vex my soul and turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead and leaves wherever be. Yes, we're singing. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. You know we're there to sing forever of his saving of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice you know who cares I'll be forever to rejoice when in valley low I look toward the mountain high and behold my Savior there, leading in the fight, with a tender hand outstretched towards the valley low. You know he's guiding me. Yes, now. I can see. Oh, yes. As I onward go. Yes, we're singing. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. You know we're there to sing forever of his saving, of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift up my voice. You know who I'll be forever to rejoice when before me billows rise from the mighty deep. Then my Lord directs my bark, he does safely keep. And on through this world below. He's a real good friend to me and oh I love him so let us sing now. Oh I want to see the master and look Cause you know we're there to sing forever. On the streets of glory, let me lift up my 
Supper. There's a fountain free. <clears throat> There's a fountain free. Tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh, haste to this brink. Tis the fountain of love from the source of and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call, tis a fountain open for all. There's a living stream with a crystal gleam from the throne of life, now it flows. While the to start this morning with a prayer, but not my prayer, but a prayer of our Savior. I'll be looking in the book of John this morning, starting in chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. Jesus prays, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, 
though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. We continue this morning with the love that Jesus has for us. First of all, his death. In John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30, it says, Later knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked it on a sponge, soaked a sponge on it, in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Then his burial. In verses 38 through 42, it says, Later Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they lead, laid Jesus there. And finally, victoriously, Jesus' resurrection. In John chapter 20, verse 1 and 2, it states, Early on, the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away, or removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. <clears throat> Jumping down to verses 11 through 16. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated there, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. John chapter 20, jumping down to verse 24 through 29. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nails, nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those 
who have not seen and yet have believed. Through Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection, we have been saved. And that is why we are remembering him this morning. Let's pray for the bread that represents Jesus' body. Father, we are so thankful for your plan. We're thankful that through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your son, we have the chance of eternal life with you. And that's what Jesus wanted, and that's what you want. For that, we are thankful. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us take a moment and give thanks and prayer for the blood that was shed for us. Jesus, we thank you that you gave up your spirit and your life for us. Not because of what we do, but because of what you have done for us, we can be with you again in heaven. And we're thankful for the blood that washes us clean. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Before we uh, pray for the offering this morning, I just wanted to reiterate one of the, the passages that I read, uh, John chapter 17. It says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Let's pray for the offering that will continue the work of our Savior. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you just a portion of what you have done for us. We pray that the work that you started may continue through us each and every day. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Right, it's time for Junior Church, ages three to six. Stand and sing them out. <clears throat> this little light of mine, you know that I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, yes, you know that I'm gonna let it shine. One more time, y'all. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. Amen. Have a seat. Good morning, church. It's good to see you here this morning. I, I see a few visiting faces. We are so glad that uh, you are with us uh, and uh, hope that you feel welcome this morning. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Dale spoke to us about the topic of fear, and uh, I told him, you, you stole my topic, and uh, he said, that's, that's okay, you can, you can do it again in a, in a couple of weeks, so I'm afraid you get to hear it again. Um, so probably if I talk about fear and things that we're afraid of, I imagine that the things that you're afraid of have probably changed a little bit over the years. Maybe the things that you were afraid of as a kid, you're not really as afraid of anymore. Now, those of you who have looked at 
fear uh, from a psycho- psychology response know that there are two responses that we, the human body has to fear. Who can tell me what those are? That's right. They are fight or flight. Something scares you, your body starts gearing up. Your heart starts beating faster and getting uh, blood to all of your, your muscles. Your lungs take in more air. You start sweating so that your body is cooled off and won't overheat. Uh, adrenaline is pumped to all your muscles and you are now ready for action. And this happens like that. Zero to 60 in milliseconds, okay? You are ready to go. Now, your reaction is your brain is going to make these calculations very, very quickly. Either I'm out of here or let's go. And we're going to take this thing down that is scaring me. So I want to ask you this morning, I'm going to show you some, some pictures here, and I'm going to ask you, what's your response, fight or flight, as we look at some of these things that might be a little bit scary? Let's say you're walking in a field, and your friend throws a rock at an animal, hoping to scare it away, but then you see this. <laughs> fight or Flight. All right, so this actually happened to me, and we fled, okay, over the nearest barbed wire fence, and what I found is that my brain made some calculations very quickly because I jumped the fence, got all scratched up, but my brain had said, better to get all scratched up, jump in that barbed wire fence, than get that guy, okay? All right, next one. It's a beautiful fall day in the neighborhood, and you're going for a walk, when you see this? (laughs) Fight or flight? I don't know. I don't know. I I think dinosaurs are pretty tough. All right. Let's say you are in a war and you see someone pointing a weapon at you. Probably going to fight. Probably going to try to protect yourself. Your body's going to do whatever it takes to win. Or what about you have just told your parents that you don't want to go to a family reunion and you see some disappointment and bewilderment on their face. Do you fight or do you flight? Good luck with whichever one you do, right? (laughs) Now, how would you react If someone walked into your bedroom at night when you're almost asleep and they're dressed up as a ghost, fight or flight? We're going to take a quick look at a little video here and see what someone chose to do. All right. So in that instance, we actually had fight and flight, okay? We actually had a little bit of both. Now, today I'd like to tell you a story, a ghost story to be exact, and maybe from it we can learn something about why we are afraid of certain things. The story is found in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, if you want to open your Bible or a Bible app and follow along there. The Bible has some things to say about fear. In fact, God and his angels are constantly telling people, do not be afraid. And yet the Bible also says, fear God. We are told to not fear, but God created a physical response to fear in order to protect us. So what can we learn about fear from this story. Is fight or flight our only options in response to fear? So let's dig in and take a look at this passage from Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind 
was against it. Now, I thought about this morning actually turning down all the, the lights, and, but then I would have had to cover all the windows to try to replicate a dark place. And not only a dark place, but imagine being on the water in the middle of the night and you're going up and down because the wind is very strong against your boat. So not only are the waves big and you're going over those, but it is slapping those waves against your boat, the only reason that you are afloat. And so the, this is the situation that the disciples are in. They're in a boat at night, going into the wind, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water beneath them, and the waves are battering their boat violently and repeatedly. All this to say that sometimes fear is made worse by anticipation. Sure, there are sometimes when we're caught off guard, right? Like a jump scare. Something jumps out at us. We were totally not expecting it. And we just get afraid because somebody has, has taken us by surprise. But a lot of the time, it's the anticipation that makes fear worse. Right? Let's say you have a test. And it's going to happen in the morning. First thing, how are you feeling right now? You're probably a little bit anxious. I've got to get ready for this test. And it's that anticipation. And then what happens after the test? Oh, okay. I was able to take care of that. No problem. Or maybe you don't so do so well, but that time passes. What about if your boss walks by your desk and says, I need to talk to you later. What are you thinking? You're, getting, you're starting to get that fear response, right? What about the doctor coming in and saying, we need to run more tests? So I imagine the disciples at this point, are in their anticipation, the fear is worse because of their surroundings. There's anticipation happening. It's dark. What's going to happen? Sometimes fear is made worse by anticipation. Let's keep reading. Verse 25. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. Now again, we get the time frame of when this is happening is when. It is night, because fear loves darkness. Fear loves darkness. If you want to frighten someone, what's the best time to do it? At night. We have a friend that's been daring one of our kids to go to a haunted house, and those are terrifying. I have no desire to go and be terrified for an extended period of time, but I guarantee you it wouldn't be as scary if it was in a well-lit warehouse because darkness is frightening and fear loves darkness. We're told in the Bible several things about this. Luke chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 says, there is nothing concealed that will be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. The Bible knows, people, Jesus knew, that sometimes the worst things happen at night. Jesus knew that the darkness is a scary place. Jesus knew that, that this happened, and he says things that happen at night are not always going to stay there. And so we don't have to be afraid of what happens in the dark because it will be brought to light. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. We don't have to be afraid of dark because we are children of light. And hopefully everywhere we go, we bring what? Light. John chapter 1 Verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Fear loves darkness, but we serve the light of the world. Do you see the parallel? Do you see the metaphor in this story? The disciples were in a dark, scary place, but the light of the world was coming. A lot of times we get scared because we're in a period of darkness. 
When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what that means is there's a bigger light on the other side of that big scary thing that's right in front of us. We don't stay in the shadow as followers of the light. We are children of the light. We serve the light of the world and we don't have to be afraid. Let's keep reading verse 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. The disciples were terrified because they thought Jesus was a ghost. Now, ghosts are terrifying. And this ghost doesn't just stay on land. This ghost can go on the water. So this ghost can basically get you wherever you go. And that is a scary thought. You cannot hide from this ghost. You cannot escape from this ghost. Here's an interesting thought. Before the disciples were fully invested in following Jesus, they were horrified at the thought of a ghost coming to get them. After Jesus came back from the dead, they wanted someone who had been dead to come back and get them. See, as Christians, we long to see a ghost because we know that death is not the end. Think about how weird Christianity is. We want someone who's dead to come back. And we ask that a holy ghost live inside of us. That sounds a little crazy, right? But this is what we believe, that death is not the end. And we want someone who has conquered death to come back and to take us with him. We don't have to fear death because Jesus has conquered it, but death is not the only thing that Jesus has conquered. So many things in our lives that we're afraid of, Jesus has conquered them because, you see, the things that frighten us are not frightening to Jesus. Jesus does not fear the dark. Jesus does not fear the waves that are terrifying the disciples. Think about this. The waves are crashing up against the boat and the disciples are terrified. And what is Jesus doing with the waves? He's walking on top of them. Our problems are Jesus' dirt that he walks on top of. The things that frighten us are not frightening to Jesus. I'd like for you to take a moment and I really want you to think about the things that are frightening to you. And I'm not just talking about things because it's Halloween. I'm talking about what are the things that are really frightening to you. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's another person. Maybe it's something at school. Maybe it is a big test. Maybe you have a doctor's appointment coming that you're worried about. Maybe you're worried for someone else. Maybe you're frightened of what's going to happen to someone else. So I want you to just take a a few seconds here And if you can either write it down, you can pray about it, let's just take a minute of silence and I want you to think about the things that are frightening to you. Thank you for that. I know for some people, silence is frightening. Uh, I want to show a video here that uh, it's, it's a song that has really impacted me recently because that, it has such a great message about what we do with fear. So let's, let's uh, take a look at this video.
me And I don't feel brave But I don't have to be Cause I walk through the valley of shadows And it scared me half to death But you're with me everywhere I go So I won't give up yet My fears will surely kill me If I didn't know the truth The things that I'm afraid of Are afraid of you When my emotions things that I'm afraid of are afraid of my God. I don't have to be afraid. I also love the line in there that talks about, wait till my fears see who's standing behind me. We don't have to be afraid because the things that are frightening to us are not frightening to Jesus. Let's look at the last part of this story this morning. Verse 27. Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, He said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Now, I've got to give some props to Peter here, because what are our responses to fear? Fight or flight? And Peter goes, hey, ghost, you said you're Jesus. I want to walk over to you. That's kind of a different response, isn't it? but it was because he recognized the voice of his master. It was because he recognized the voice of Jesus and he said, I, can wa- I want to walk to him. We all know the story of Peter walking on water. Now let's give Peter a little credit. He's the only one that trusted Jesus enough to get out of the boat. He's the one that actually took steps on water and not just water, but big waves of water. But even this giant of faith sank that day. And the reason why his fear won out that day was because he focused on his problem instead of his protector. He focused, he forgot about his deliverer and focused on his dilemma. He zoned in on his mess and forgot about the Messiah who was walking toward him. See, sometimes we get so focused on our complications that we forget our creator who is standing right beside us. So this morning, I don't know what is frightening to you. 
I don't know what is scaring you, but I hope that you can take some peace in looking at this story and knowing the light of the world is with you. He is walking towards you, encouraging you. You don't have to be afraid because the things that you're afraid of are afraid of Jesus. If you need prayers this morning, maybe something is is making you afraid. Our shepherds and their wives will be at the back. Or you can come forward and ask for prayers. We'd love to pray for you. If you just need to speak with someone, you can go and talk to them and let them know your fears this morning and the things that are making you afraid that you would like to give to Jesus. If you have any needs, would you come while we stand and sing together? God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died, to by my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can say Yeah.
Thank you, Franklin. There are so many reasons, as you look in the world around us, why we could be afraid. There's just a big mess. And the track record, as you look at the world around us, is it's going to get worse. But we're not looking at the next 100 or 200 years. We're looking at eternity. And with that perspective in mind, we do not need to be afraid. We have a Savior who's alive. The, the early church had this, this phrase, Maranatha, O Lord, come. The book of Revelation finishes with it. As, as, as John's kind of telling him, hey, there's persecution coming, but we win. And so, so he concludes with, O Lord Jesus, come. And, and sometimes we, we kind of get too bogged down in what's going on around us. But we need to be looking ahead, that we have a Savior who's coming back, and that we can say, oh, Lord, come, with that assurance, with that confidence that he's conquered death, and he did it for us, too. And so we have that hope. Thank you. Uh, a couple announcements. Um, Brian Fotsack. Or Fatasek. That A in there just throws me. Fatasek, again, his, he will be here uh, next weekend. We've had the schedule uh, in the bulletins. It'll, it'll be in there again this week. Let me strongly encourage you, take advantage of, of the, the small groups. With their, they're age-based, and if the one that kind of fits your age doesn't quite work for you, you can switch one or the other. You may not even quite know which one you belong in anyway. Pick one and come. Take advantage of that chance to come kind of meet him in a smaller setting. He will be teaching a combined adult class next Sunday morning. Please plan to be here and hear that part of, of the weekend. And then he'll uh, preach the, the sermon uh, next Sunday morning as well. Uh, we will have some forms that will be available. I assume we'll probably have them out there next week. Uh, to, to get your feedback, the elders want to know, what do you think? Uh, we we want to understand what, what do you see as strengths and weaknesses and just your comments so we can evaluate, uh, Brian, with, with your input. So please take advantage of the chance to have input to give and then provide it so we can, we can understand what it is that uh, you're thinking. So that's, that's next weekend. Uh, coming up in a couple weeks, two weeks from today, the, the ladies at their retreat last weekend put together a bunch of, of blessing bags, and they're going to be taking those downtown to pass out. They could use more people to help them do it. It would be a, kind of an interesting opportunity. Perhaps you're looking for, what can I do to help serve? So that will be at, at next Sunday. Grab a quick lunch and be back here at 1230, and then they'll all go down. If you have questions on that, Phyllis or Angela can... can fill you in on that. It's not just open for ladies to go do that. This is anybody who wants to be involved in, in going down there and, and uh, helping kind of bless people, there's an opportunity to do that. Uh, just glad everybody's here this morning. You took the time to be here to uh, hopefully draw closer to God, to, to find a way to, to live this week in a way that will bring more glory to Him. Let's stand for a closing prayer, and then we'll have a song afterward. Our Heavenly Father, we, we are thankful for all that you do for us. Father, there, there's, there, there's so much going on that in the midst here, this morning, we got people who are, who are ill and have family members who, are, who have troubles. There's just things that, that we look at and say there seems to be no hope. Help us never to lose sight of, of the fact that our hope is not in this physical life turning out well. Our hope is in an eternal life with you. And that we can keep our focus there. In, in the meantime, we do ask for your, your healing and your comfort in, in the midst of what we face. But help us to, to view that only as a chance to help move us toward you. Father, as we uh, have the chance for 
Brian Fatasek to be here next week uh, to see if he might be the person to, to fill the, the pulpit role. Uh, just pray for your wisdom, your insight, that we can understand whether it's, it's him or somebody else, and, and just ask for your, your guidance. Father, we, we thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus, that because of him, we have that life and hope. And help us to never forget that, but to live a life that reflects that we've been transformed because of, of his life and death and resurrection. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Lord, we pray that you will go with us as we leave this place, but not your presence. 
Uh, we know all the things that's going on in the world, but as uh, Franklin taught this morning, uh, our Lord Jesus is stronger than any fear that we may ever face. So go, we go out with him today and we try to bless those that we come across. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to give thanks and ask it all that every heart say, amen. <laughs>